in this video we're going to be looking at how to convert between vector and Cartesian equations of lines. So I'm going to cover quite a few different things in this video and I'll timestamp all of them below so you can skip through to whichever one you want to see. But we're going to be looking at things like given uh, a point on a line and its gradient, how to find its vector equation, how to uh, see how in two dimensions the gradient and direction vector are related, how to go from a vector equation to Cartesian and of course the other way around as well, um, as well as some general forms of these lines. Uh, if it is useful, please do like and subscribe. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at this example here where we have a line that passes through the point two, three, and we're given that it has a gradient of one third, and we're asked to find the vector equation of this line. Well, let's remind ourselves, what is the vector equation of a line? Well, it says that any given point on our line R is equal to some vector A, and this vector is gonna take us onto the line, plus some scalar multiple of the direction vector. Okay, and this is a vector that is parallel to our line, and we use it to get to any other point on the line. So let's think, how can we how can we find this first how, vector a? How can we get onto the line? Well, we know that the point two three is on the line. Okay, so let me mark that one on my picture here. I know this is a point on my line two three, and so we could say, well, to get onto the line, I could just travel along this vector here, the vector two three. So we have our equation of our line is going to be two three plus some scalar multiple of the direction vector of this line. Well, what is that? Well, we know the gradient is one third, and the gradient of our line tells us, well, it's the difference or the change in y divided by our change in x. And so what this means is if we travel three units across in our x direction and one unit up in our y, then that's gonna get us back onto our line, isn't it? It's just what the gradient of our line is. And so I could say, well, as a, as a direction vector, this is three across in the X and one up in my Y. And from that, we've now found the vector equation of this line. And extending from that idea, we can say that, well, in two dimensions, okay, a line with a gradient of A over B is gonna have a direction vector of B A. Hopefully you can see why that is, because it's the difference, the top element is gonna be our X direction and our bottom element is gonna be our Y direction. Okay, so it's our change in y divided by change in x. Hopefully you can see how they relate to each other. Let's now see how we can go in reverse. So here we've been given a vector equation of a line, okay? And we want to get it in the form y equals mx plus c, so in a Cartesian form. So we're gonna use kind of what we've done previously to work this out. So the first thing we could say is, well, I know that this is gonna get me onto the line. So this is gonna be a point on my line and it's gonna have the coordinates two, three. And we can use what we've just said above to say that, well, this direction vector, if it has the entries 3, 1, if we, I guess, take the reciprocal of that, that's going to give us the gradient of our line. So it's 1 third. And what we can do from here is we can use y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1 to find a Cartesian form of this equation. So we're going to have y minus 3 is equal to 1 third multiplied by x minus 2 and so we get whoops I don't know why I put a bracket in there so we get y minus 3 is equal to a third x minus 2 thirds and adding 3 to both sides we get y is equal to a third x plus 7 over 3 now there is actually another way we can do this okay and, and this way is more useful because uh, this is how we're going to do it when we're dealing with 3d vectors or lines in three dimensions and so what we're going to do is actually recognize that this R, okay, is just a point on our line. So it's going to have, let me write it in green, it's, it could be expressed like this, x, y is equal to 2, 3 plus lambda 3, 1. And so from this, we could actually get a pair of parametric equations. If we haven't met those yet, uh, you'll see them in A-level maths. If you have, then you'll be familiar with this. We have x is equal to 2 plus 3 lambda and y is equal to three plus one lambda. And what we wanna to do to get rid of our parameter, because in this these two equations, our lambda is the parameter, what we wanna do is we want to rearrange this so lambda is the subject, and then we're gonna set these parametric equations equal to each other, and that's gonna eliminate the parameter. So we could say, okay, let's subtract two from both sides and then divide by three, and we get x minus two over three is equal to lambda, do the same for this one, we could subtract three from both sides and we get y minus three is equal to lambda. Let's now set these equations equal to each other and we get x minus two over three is equal to y subtract three. Now I'm worried I'm gonna run out of room so I'm just gonna move this over slightly. 
What I'm going to do now is multiply both sides by 3 and I get x minus 2 is equal to 3y minus 9. Add 9 to both sides. I'm running out of space. I'll write it here. Uh, x plus 7 is equal to 3y. Dividing both sides by 3, we get 1 third x plus 7 over 3 is equal to y. And you can see here, these two equations are the same. So it's two methods of doing the same thing. Now the method in green is probably what we're going to use more often uh, as it's more useful. We can't use this method over here for lines in three dimensions as we don't have a gradient. Um, but talking of that, let's actually have a look at an example. So here uh, we have a line with the vector equation given by this thing here and we want the Cartesian form. So this is where we're going to use our parametric equations method. So the first thing I'm going to do is write them out. So I've got I guess if we wanted to, we could write it out in a longer form. So we could say x, y, z is equal to, and I'm actually to save time, I'm going to bring this thing down. And let's write out our equation. So we're going to get x is equal to 2 plus 6 lambda, y is equal to 3 plus 3 lambda, and z is equal to 1 plus 4 lambda. Let's now rearrange all of these to make lambda the subject. So we're going to get x minus 2 over 6 is equal to lambda. For this one we're going to get y minus 3 over 3 is equal to lambda and finally we're going to get z minus 1 over 4 is equal to lambda. Now for this what we do is we just set all three of these things equal to each other. So we get x minus 2 over 6 is equal to y minus 3 over 3 which is equal to z minus 1 over 4. Now, this might seem weird, but this is exactly how we can leave it. We don't have to do anything else. We can leave it with two equal signs. And this is actually how we represent a line in 3D using our Cartesian form. Okay. Now, there are some um, exceptions to this, I suppose. And it's when we have an example like this. So here we have another uh, line given by this vector equation. And notice, okay, that in our direction vector, we have an entry that is equal to zero. Okay, and when this happens, our uh, Cartesian form of our line is going to be slightly different. So let's see why that is. Let's first write out um, our parametric equations. So we have x is equal to 2 plus 6 lambda, y is equal to 3 plus 3 lambda, and z is going to be equal to 1. So let's rearrange the top two to get uh, lambda as the subject. So x minus 2 over 6 is equal to lambda, and y minus 3 over 3 is equal to lambda. Now notice that I can't actually set z equal to lambda. So what we do is we just leave it as it is. So we set these two equal to each other and we leave z equals 1 on its own. It remains fixed. So we say x minus 2 over 6 is equal to y minus 3 over 3 comma z equals 1. Okay, so if uh, one of the entries in our direction vector is equal to zero, then our form of our line is going to be slightly different and it's going to look like this. Now, if we have a direction vector, okay, where um, we have non-zero entries, what we can do is say we have a general form like this. So here we have a vector equation of our line where we have it like this, and we want to express it in a Cartesian form given that P, Q, and R are not equal to zero. So none of the entries in our direction vector are equal to zero. So even though we could probably skip ahead to this, I'm going to make it really, really simple. I'm going to write down all the steps. So let's first write down our parametric equations. So x is equal to a plus mu p. I've just changed the, uh, the scalar, but it's exactly the same as if we were to use lambda. y is equal to b plus mu times q. And z is equal to c plus mu times r. Let's now rearrange these. And so we're going to get x minus a over p is equal to mu. We are going to get that b minus, whoops, y minus b over q is equal to mu. And finally, I'm running out of space, z minus c over r is equal to mu. Let's now write this out all equal to each other. So we're going to get x, I'll try and write it neatly, x minus a over p is equal to y minus b over q, which is equal to z minus c over r. Now notice the relationship okay, between the two. Each of the entries of our direction vectors are the denominators of each part of the, our fraction in our Cartesian form. And each of our sort of position vector to get onto the line where we're subtracting each part 
from our X, Y, and Z. Okay, and we can use this to speed up our process a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this down actually for this final example here. So you can see here we have our, let me highlight it, a general position or our general equation of our line in vector form and this sort of quick way to switch between the two. So here uh, we need to find the vector equation of the line with the Cartesian equation given here. So let's see how we can do this pretty quickly. Well, I know it's x minus two, okay? So this minus two, let me highlight it, represents our a in this case. Okay, so we're gonna get uh, our vector equation of our line is gonna be equal to two. Then we've got, whoops, let me get the highlighter. I've got this plus two here, which is my minus b. So I'm gonna take this to be negative two. Let me write in all the same color. Hopefully you can see where these are coming from. Uh, and then finally, let me use a different color. We've got minus c, which is our minus six, so that represents positive six here. Plus lambda times our direction vector. Well, that's just the denominators, isn't it? That's just our p, q, and r. So three, four, eight are in this vector here. Hopefully that's clear. So we're gonna get three, four, eight. And that's pretty much it for this video. So hopefully it was useful. If it was, please do like and subscribe and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.